Uh, yesterday, I just got back from a 10-day bike tour of the entire St. Croix Valley from the top to the bottom. So, I've always wanted to do one of these. I like it when other people do these for, uh, you know, for reference, future reference. So, I put the bike back together and I'm going to do like one of these unpacking videos. Um, show you each bag, each pannier, uh, what's in there. Um, as it comes out. This is 62 pounds. That's a lot of stuff. If I were to do this again, and I probably will do this again, I might bring this much stuff for like a short, like a one-stop weekend, but not for a 10-day trip where I'm stopping every time, which is what I did this time. Um, it was hard getting up those hills, and who knows if that maybe that's me, maybe that's the amount of stuff. <laughs> the amount of stuff was not helping, so. Um, I'm going to uh, zoom in closer to one of these bags and start unpacking it. Okay, so we're going to start with what's on the back of the bike. This shot, it looks insane to me that I carried. These bags are huge. First thing is this guy. This is red. He's my mascot. Uh, a lot of the stuff on the bike is gratuitous, but not this. He's been in some car trips, road trips. And I just found him in storage again, and I was like, well, he's been in my, he was my road trip pet, and now bike trip pet. So, I don't know. I saw on a packing list, don't, don't ride without a mascot, so I didn't want to, like, leave that up to chance. Um, and then here's the other thing. I brought a chair. I'm always going to bring a chair. This is a backpacking chair, so it's not super big. It's kind of cheap. The, the zipper broke, and so I was using this strap, and there was actually a bungee on there before, too. But... You can look up backpacking chairs. I'm not going to put it together. This is a cheap one. They make lighter ones. So these are these straps that I like. They're Coughlin's. I always bring a bunch of them. And they have this really simple ratchet head on there. And if you if you kind of put it in the wrong way around and then coil it up, you can. I'll show you that too. You can tighten them up and be more compact. So I bring a bunch of these for various things. Here's my cup. This is always the last thing to pack. My carabiner mug, because I'm drinking coffee when I'm packing up the bike, and then when I'm done, I just finish it up and stick it on there. This is another gratuitous thing. Uh, I did use it. In fact, I used a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have brought, but this is a... I kind of had to use this, because I'll show you. It's not... Oh. It's a little backpacking electric guitar that I built. So it was a long project getting this built and I had to I built this so I had to bring it. I had to bring it. I built it for bike trips. I probably will bring it again on weekend one stop things. I'm going to be hanging out at camp for a long time and then inside here is just a cable and some strings. So that's that. There's another one of these straps. So Oh, um, these things, so I built these panniers myself. I mean, I, I bought, like, military bags, canvas rucksacks, and, like, put the hooks on them, and the bungees, and I made frames for the inside. They're actually pretty heavy, which is another reason why I want to get new ones, uh, because of what they are. They're canvas and aluminum, which is not the best way to do this. But these little tabs, I brought, I went to a, like, a, a camping supply shop that does, like, tent repair and stuff, and they, they sold these little tabs on here for a, a small fee. Another one of these straps. Um, this is a voltaic panel. It's fully charged because I was at a bar yesterday in the sun. So um, it charges a battery, and then you can use the battery. It does pass-through charging, so you can charge your device. Um, it'll charge the battery, and then once there's a charge on the battery, it'll charge your device. So. Uh, this is one of the ways I was keeping my phone and my tablet charged on this trip. Bike light here. I didn't. I only used it once because it was raining, but I don't really do any riding at night. And then these two pockets had these things in them. These get filled with dirty river water, which I was drinking out of. And then there's a filter that you squeeze the water out of. So these were full. I was carrying four liters of water, too dirty, too clean, most of the time. I mean, I would start with four liters and then uh, I had to find a new water source. So those 
around there too. So now I'll start um, opening up one of these. Okay, here we are at the rear left pannier. Oh, still there's another side pocket, and this is where my clean water supply goes. I fill this up um, and have it ready to uh, fill the actual water bottles with that I drink out of. So that's my backup clean water. And then this pocket here, it has various, because I was afraid of running out again. I had a little bit left in this one, but there's still some left. Off. And then to diversify here, I've got a 25% dry formula. And this one is 98% because I was uh, in a field that I named Tick Field. And I bought some 98% <laughs> just in case. So now I have that. So that goes, the bug spray goes there when you get off the bike. Uh, when you're moving, you're not getting eaten up, but when you get off the bike, sometimes that will happen. They'll start swarming you. In here, this little top pocket, keep the bike lock. It's just a long, 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 the longest I could get cable lock because you're not always near a bike rack. But you want something long so you don't have to like try to move the bike into like a weird position and all that. So this is dirty. It's a ShamWow. <laughs> Bought it at a dollar store. It's just a thick chamois. It's like a pack towel. But this is normally my clean dish towel. But it rained the last night of camping and I got gravel dust on everything. So I, this is what I use to wipe it off. I'll put it in the wash and it'll go back in my cook set. Here's my handprint from like using it to wipe down my tent. So I could get a new one of these too. You could just buy a pack towel too and then when it gets old you cut it up. Which I, which I do, so, and, you know, I might get rid of that if it gets too dirty. Okay, these have these nylon, I bought, like, they're called rucksack liners, they're for, it's another military surplus thing, but these kind of help the water run off uh, if it's raining, so I tie this tight, like that, and then tuck it in this way, so nothing can, nothing will, I mean, not nothing, but it won't, it'll be, have a harder time getting in. So, that helps. The canvas will soak it up, this will wick it away. It seemed to keep everything dry, I did get cotton one down for. These are, so I use these little Amazon packing cubes, I don't know, they're not that useful, but there's, it's something. These are my slip-ons, I think it's good to have slip-ons, like I don't want to have to like try to contort myself to tie my shoes when I get out of my tent, when the shoes are all muddy especially, and when you really need to get out of your tent in the morning, if you know what I mean. Leave that up to your imagination. Here, okay, this is a dry bag, which, you know, anything important goes in a dry bag, a little top dry bag. They work pretty well. This one has my important papers and my tablet and some small electronics. So, here, some stuff just fell out. That was just a map. One of my many maps. These are my Bluetooth headphones that I use for when I want to watch a movie. Uh, or falling asleep sometimes I'll listen to uh, some downloaded YouTube things. I was watching some number theory videos. Here's a book with a little card, raccoon, raccoon card that I found in one of the parks. I never read this book. I always bring too many books. I should stop bringing books. These are all my maps. Uh, some of them I didn't need. I had my packing list in here just in case, uh, you know, I did use that on the first day to try to make sure I was getting everything consistent, but everything moves around all the time. I'm always reconfiguring the packing, especially like as my food supply dwindles down, it's, it gets lighter. So when I said 62 pounds, it's actually probably more like 55 or something now with the lack of food because I have very little food left. These are some lyrics I wrote down on napkins that go with the music project that went along with the guitar and stuff, so there's some more equipment that has to do with that. And then the tablet. This has a drum machine and a synth on it that I was using and kind of messing around with the guitar stuff and recording, so I also use this to watch movies. If I'm stuck in the tent, I watched, uh, I watched Shutter Island on this trip. And then a book. I was reading this. I think I got 30 pages done in 10 days. Not too bad for a bike trip. This is a pack, this is a packable backpack. It's an Osprey. It packs down to a really small size. 
but I never had it packed down. I had it packed down the first day, and that's it, because it by default became my swim kit. So here's swim shorts right there. Here's a Summit packable towel, which I don't like. I'm going to go back to the pack towel, which dry quicker. Here's the case for that, which I never used. I'm probably not going to use it. I'm probably not going to use this either anymore. I'll use this for my, like, city, you know, going to the beach in the city. But I'll go back to pack towels for camping. The water kit, filter, and, like, a back, a back washing, uh, a back washing syringe for cleaning it, for cleaning out the filter. Endless amounts of use, you just have to back wash it. It'll never, the filter never goes bad. And then this is the mesh thing that it came in. I don't know if it's worth having this. Um, so this is kind of weird. I took some shorts and just like took the middle out and sewed it together. So it's kind of like a skirt, but it looks like shorts, right? When I'm wearing them, it kind of looks like I'm wearing just loose athletic shorts, which is nice for uh, when you get out of the water, you can just change really quickly without having to like uh, actually be naked in public. Um, and you can dry off easier. Not have to put like wet, you know, wet or like dry clothes on when you're wet. And then this is this is that. That's everything in there. Okay. Um, not sacrificing beer on this trip. I'm always finding a way to deal with not having a cooler. So this gets filled with ice whenever it's insulated, 40 ounces. Um, whenever I'm near ice, like at a soda fountain or maybe you know stop at a bar, get some ice. They look at you funny, but. Um, you have that, and then I have these insulated foil bags. They're not really insulated, but you can stick one can of beer in there and cool it off with some ice in about a half hour. So we'll get to those. Cook set. Here's another part of the cook set. This is a water bottle that I use just to heat up water. So the cook set. Here is, well, I'll go through this first. This is the main thing. Here's a pot. Lid comes off. Here's a tea ball. I did have some ginger tea because I was feeling like I was maybe getting a bug or something. A little mini sponge that my friend gave me. She drove me to the start of the trip and I needed to, uh, my water bottle was getting kind of funky inside so I had to scrub it. So she gave me this and I scrubbed it out with a stick and kept using it. Here is, we'll come back to this. This goes with the stove. Uh, really, this is a really thin chamois that I use for like wiping the suds off when I dry my dishes. Um, and also for putting, just laying out to put stuff on when they're drying. And so everything goes in this pot. This is my stove. It's a soda can stove. You can look up videos on how to make these. Um, the reason I made one of these is because I thought if I ever lost it, I would make another one, but I've had this for 10 years. And you fill it with alcohol, I'll show you that, and light it, and these little jets start spewing out heat, fire, like a normal, it looks like a, like a normal stove, and it acts like a normal stove, except you can't adjust it. And so this goes with that too, this is from a chafing dish set that I bought and didn't use anything other than the, the support for it. And the flats go in these, go in this bag here. Okay, so there's the flats. Click. Click in there. And you got your stove with a pot support. So, also in this bag, lighter. I have redundancies with lighters, so there'll be lots of them. And a spork and a spork spoon, spork spoon and a knife. And also, not in here right now, but should be, should be if it were properly packed. This is the windscreen, and it came with a little pouch, but. Since it actually fits in here, uh, better just have it in there. Here's the pouch. I'll probably use that for something else now. Not for this. 
Dr. Bronner's soap, another redundancy. I bring several little bottles of this strategically packed in various things. A bowl. I like to have a bowl that's separate from the pot because I don't like to eat out of the pot if I don't need to. It's easier to clean. A uh, little Nalgene, four ounce Nalgene with fat in it. Uh, it started with coconut oil, ended with butter. So I had to buy one stick of butter. I ran out of storage space. So I'm kind of starting where I thought I left off. <laughs> I had to put things back together. At least I'm honest about it. <laughs> Here's a dry bag that has one thing in it. Going back on my cook kit here, this has a hot pad in it because, um, I don't know, I don't like burning my fingers. I'm probably going to get like a silicone mitt thing or something like that to replace this. Something that I can just dry off when it needs to be. This will get soaked. I bought this at a dollar store like 12 years ago. And here's the Amazon packing cube that it all goes in. It's, these things are good for stuff like that. I don't know. Um, that's it for the liner, I think. No, this is clothes. So the thing about clothes is that they're over here. <laughs> Pretend you didn't see that. Well, here's my bag of clothes. So in here, it's another dry bag, roll top. So, I mean, you do not want your clothes to get wet. Like, at all. Even if, like, a little bit of water gets in here, I would rather not have it get in. So I have a vest. This is a fleece vest. Got it at a thrift store. It's really nice, actually. It's, hold, it's held up pretty well. Um, it's really good for staying warm in the mornings. And then you can just, you know, take it off. So uh, I like to have a cotton shirt at camp. So that's the camp shirt. Two bandanas. The other one's in here somewhere. Um, synthetic underwear, this doesn't have cotton in it, as much cotton really as, as others. C9 is the brand. Um, it dries really quickly. And it has legs. It's important that it has legs. Um, I don't wear bike shorts, so I try to get underwear that's like clo as close to bike shorts as possible. The other bandana is there. A pair of gloves just in case it's cold. I don't know, cold and not rainy, because you don't want to wear wet gloves in the rain. Um, holding on to this sock here, because the other ones are there somewhere. I bought a t-shirt at the Goat at this bar that I went to in Taylor's Falls. So that's kind of my main source of graphic tees these days is, you know, I'll get one, one t-shirt on a trip from somewhere, usually a park. I'm wearing my Big Wood State Park t-shirt right now. Flannel, I don't know, a pair of arm warmers would probably be better rather than a flannel. It's kind of big. But again, this is my pillow too. And I don't know what happened to that thing. Let's see. Um, it'll go there. Uh, here's a pair of socks. They're darn tough. I brought two pair, one to wear, one to keep. Uh, one to keep in here. When they get dirty, I wash them and swap them out. Um, just some Dr. Bronner's in a bag and, and let them dry on a on a rope. So this is empty, but with this, with, when it's stuffed with clothes, uh, it eliminates the need for a pillow. But you don't want to put your... I don't like having my face on plastic, so I bring this. This is when I, when I bought my sheets, it came in this, and I don't know why they give you this, but it's it's nice. You're only gonna, you're never gonna use it. I don't think people put their sheets back in these, but it's a, a really nice small pillowcase that you can kind of, you know, stuff. It's got this little stop on it, so it's much nicer on your face and head than the plastic. So I put this around the bag uh, when it's stuffed with clothes and it's time to go to sleep. So that's. There's one more thing in here. Toiletry kit. I'm going to go through this pretty fast because I'm not going to open it up. There's a lighter in here. Another lighter. Um, daily packs of pills that I have to take every day. We're in individual labeled bags. There's band-aids. There's eye drops. There's gauze. Melatonin. Ibuprofen. Zinc, which I needed because I thought I was coming down with something. It's always a good idea to take some zinc. 
a lot of it right after you eat because you can get nauseous if you don't if you take it on an empty stomach. Deodorant, a small one. Mouthwash, a small one. Other, there's things in that pocket that shouldn't be in there. Dr. Bronner's, again, toothpaste. Another lighter. One of these toothbrushes. Um, last thing, there's uh, some petroleum jelly. You could use chapstick, too. I just think that, you know... I buy it anyways for my fire starters, so just put a little bit in this. Um, chapstick is just more plastic, and I hate buying plastic. Even though I go through so many plastic bags that you'll see in my food kit. So that's it for the... That's it for in the liner. Under the liner, there's some stuff, too, that I just... It's like an extra bottom compartment that becomes just because of the way the bag sags. A couple cans of beer that I didn't get to. Beer is heavy, goes on the bottom. And then there's two of these. I used to have three. Um, they're called wag bags. And I will let you look that up. And you can imagine for yourself why I used to have three and now I have two. And that's it for that bag. We'll move on to the next one. Okay, this is the opposite side. Um, but this is the side that's harder to get to. This is where I keep all my camping stuff. So the top pouch here, these top pouches are just like whatever... I forget to pack in the right spot. They go in there. And then random stuff. Like this is the park rules for the last place that I camped at. That I never looked at. Because I knew what the rules were. Already. This is a lantern that hangs in my tent. It's kind of cool. If you want to hang out in your tent. It's nice to have like some lighting. So you can see what you're doing. I don't like having my headlamp on. It's just like. You know. Just when I'm walking around. Um. Of course, all the stakes end up like this for some reason. Uh, and this is one of those. <laughs> Might get some new ones. I don't think they're that expensive. This is my rope that I'd use for clothesline and for hanging food. Uh, so it's got one of these wire wire trap, wire snap, I don't forget what they're called. Um, carabiners. And then some rope. And you'll see zip ties sticking out of here because I didn't bring clothespins. Zip ties are sticking out of there because oftentimes the, the rope will be at an angle. You're hanging it from a tree and then you're going to stake it to the ground because maybe there's not two trees. So if you put a zip tie on there, you can keep the you can keep whatever whatever's on there from sliding down. At least enough. It's functional. And then you keep them on there. You don't have to take them off. You just slide them where you need them. Um, and then it doubles as, you know, I take all my clothes off clothesline at night this is going to get dewy and then uh, use it to hang my food so we're going to go into the bag oh actually there's one more thing actually two more things side pockets there's this guy I'd like to keep this on the bike I could put another bottle cage it's camp fuel it's actually just heat H-E-E-T it's basically just alcohol pure alcohol um, that I use for my stove. So this will fit two bottles. I don't carry uh, the, ex the the bottles that they come in, I don't carry I don't carry them when they're open. I use when, I, when as soon as they're open they go in this in this jar. because um, I don't want that stuff leaking all over the place. Um, so this keeps it secure. I don't mind carrying a bottle of heat if it's closed with the foil on but not if it's open it, it'll go in there so that carries two of them and I'll often carry a third as a backup when I need it um, and it's small enough that I can kind of fit it anywhere so here we got another liner this is important this is a platypus filled with whiskey I started the trip with a bottle of Isle of Sky scotch blended scotch and then switch to Maker's Mark, and I had to uh, sell back to the liquor store the extra fifth that was left when I filled that up because uh, I didn't have room for it. I didn't want to carry the glass bottle, so I was like, you guys drink whiskey? They were like, no, but we'll find someone who does. It's good whiskey. This is my footprint. It's just a tarp cut real small, smaller than the tent. Here's my tent. Uh, Alps Mountaineering Lynx. 
Not the smallest tent in the world, not the lightest tent in the world, but it was 50 bucks. It's a one person tent and it's a two layer. It's a, it's got a fly on it, which my last one didn't. So I'm willing to sacrifice the size of it. This is my, it's a Thermarest mattress. Self-inflating, the standard Thermarest self-inflating mattress. Not self-inflating anymore, but it's good. It's held up really well over the years. I keep my poles separate just because it's easier for trying to pack things in. Okay, my sleeping bag. I run hot, so I don't need a big sleeping bag. This, I'll take this camping in October. It's a summer sleeping bag, but I don't care. I run, I don't, I was sleeping on top of this most of the time. So, but this packs down really, really small, which is great. And that's actually it for this bag. This is mostly just the big camping stuff, except for underneath where I have a couple more cans of North Shore Lager, which is a good Vienna lager from Castle Danger Brewing. And another good thing to put down here is my tent stakes because they're pokey and I don't want them, I don't really want them to poke the mattress or I don't know. I guess they could poke a can of beer, but there's also guy lines in here. I haven't used my guy lines at all on this trip just because I wanted to set up fast. Oh yeah, one more thing out here. This is important too. In the top, here's a here's a can that I forgot to throw away. In the in the the front pocket down the bottom. There's not many left, but these are cotton balls that are rubbed in petroleum jelly that I use as fire starters. This was full. So I used it, well, half full. I used them all up. But that's a really good, cheap, easy, homemade fire starter to use. Um, and that's it. These bags can come off. And I'll show you this part. These are hooks from the hardware store and a bungee that's just tied on there. It's really, really simple. And it just goes on your rack just like any other pannier. So these can come off because they are empty and we'll go to the front. All right, so here we have my handlebar bag and you've got the little, little bit of the cockpit view here. Um, maybe I'll just move this a little bit to show a little bell. I'm not going to ring it. My roommates are going to wonder what's going on in here. Maybe they already are. Uh, cycle computer, because I like to keep track of how many miles I've done over the trip and my average speed, and I can calculate, like, how far, you know, it is to my next stop if, if I have this. Because the Google Maps, they assume that you're riding without a load. And then this thing, I'm using my phone as the camera, but this holds my phone right here. So uh, that's all really good to have. There's a mirror... Again, my panniers are too big. They get in the way of the mirror. If I had some slimmer ones, I'd be able to see what's going on. But if I'm on a wide shoulder, I can see who's coming at me. Of course, when you're not on a wide shoulder, that's when you really need to see who's coming at you, and it doesn't help then. So, anyways, that's... And then a note about handlebars, too. These are butterfly bars, which are really good for having a handlebar bag. If you have brakes right here, it you can't put one of these here. You know, if you have like a double brake configuration on a road bike or something. But anyways. Um, okay, so as we'll see later, I have a dynamo hub on one of the wheels. And this converts that AC into DC. And it converts the voltage for a USB cable. So it's a it, it trickle charges a battery, basically. This thing does. It takes the power from the hub. And it trickle charges the battery. So I have a USB in there. And then on the handlebar bag, on the handlebar bag, there is a little pocket on the side. And that's where I keep this little Belkin. Uh, I think it's like 4,000 milliamp hours or something like that. Um, two bars on it because I didn't do a lot of riding yesterday. And... It charges a battery, and then you use the battery to charge your phone at night, at camp. This one does not have the pass-through charging. Um, I'm probably going to use the. I'm probably going to use this as a backup. Fill it up once 
at the beginning of a trip and then just have it in my back pocket and get another voltaic um, charger to go right here. Okay, this is, like I said, a pack towel, which is a better, I like this band brand better, I think, than Cedar Summit. But it's a chunk of one that I cut off. The, it got old, and now I use it as a face rag, kind of. Um, use it to wipe my hands when I'm eating, or just use it to like wipe sweat off my face if I'm at the top of a hill and taking a break. There's my sunglass case. Of course, I don't use this as much as I should. I just tend to throw things in the bag. But there's a little lens wipe thing on there, too. So, And then my glasses. These are prescriptions, so... Um, my glasses will go in here if I have the sunglasses on and vice versa. This whole bag just gets to be um, chaotic, which is kind of the point of it. It's like, I don't know, everything, it's whatever you want right, right at your fingertips. These are the legs for my hiking pants with the ankle zips and the knee zips pretty straightforward. You want those on hand. Definitely if you're going to be trekking through some weeds, you want to put your socks up over your pants so that the ticks have no way to access you. These, I just I started using these. This is the first time I've used these and these actually turned out really well because I got sunburn on the first couple days of the trip and then I used these and the sunburn healed pretty, pretty nicely. They're I thought they were arm warmers, but they're actually sun sleeves because they actually cool you. They're cooling sleeves, so you feel your arms feel colder when you're wearing them, but they protect you from the sun. And, I don't know, this was burnt a little bit, but it's, it's healed up pretty nicely, and then it prevents the farmer tan kind of thing. It's good. Here's some sunscreen, which actually wasn't working that well because I got sunburned. Uh, I think it's good to have hand lotion. I had to buy some because I forgot it. Um, that that uh, hand sanitizer just dries your hands out. Here is my... So I'm using my short USB for the handlebar bag battery. This is a six foot. So I can... The, the back one on the solar panel has pass-through charging, so I can plug this in back there, wrap it around the top tube, and bring it to my phone if... I feel like I want to keep my phone charged if I don't have a full charge in the morning. Um, okay, this is my this is the map I was using on my trip. I did the whole Saint Croix Valley, and this is a map of the whole Saint Croix Valley. I got my little marks on there, of, you know, how many miles to where and what my plans were, and little dots of places where I, you know, stayed for reference. So this would get. This would get folded up, kind of, and there's a spot in my bag here for a map to slide in. This is the map of the last campground I stayed at. And I'm going to get a new handlebar bag. This doesn't work very well. It's Banjo Brothers. They're, it was really cheap, but it's really hard to get a, to get that to snap on. And then if there's anything in this pocket here, it's just a disaster. But I'm going to keep that map as a souvenir. And yeah, there's a little pocket here where I usually keep a comb. Yep, a comb and a lighter, another lighter. This is, I couldn't find a good travel comb, but I, I bought one that had, it had a long handle on here and I just snapped it off. And it made a nice travel comb. I like the coarse ones, because I have long hair. If I didn't have long hair, I wouldn't need to bring a comb in the first place, probably. Extra carabiner, just those go anywhere they go. That's the other sun sleeve. Here's a little thing for the back of my phone. I never used it. I just took it off. Um, it goes with the quad lock system. Another lighter. My quick flosser kit for flossing. A pen, which I didn't bring with me, but I got it from... I was at Wildwater Bar and Grill in Danbury, Wisconsin. And I said, can I have this pen? And they were like, yeah, because I tried to register self-serve at the campsite, but I didn't have a pen. I had to borrow one from somebody. Extra extra uh, medication, because you don't want to have one of your supplies get wet and then be out of any important medications that you're supposed to take every day. 
Here's a face mask because I had there was one spot that was like COVID enforcing of that that I went to. The ooh, yeah. Light show. This has a little spot for a light on it because I'm covering up where my light normally goes, right here. So if I'm using the bag, I can put a light there. If I got the bag off, I've got a little spot for the light on there. Then, what is this? Oh, this is a weird little spoke repair kit. You can replace your spoke with a, like a nylon cord. And it's got the instructions in there. Of course, I've never, I bought this 10 years ago. I've never used it. I've never had to use it. And I don't know if it'll work since it's so old, but it's there if I need it. I have extra spokes too. So, okay, now we're going into this part. This handlebar bag is really awkward. There's a plastic sleeve in here, and on the zipper, there's a little thin bungee cord with a pocket knife, which is sometimes useful. Um, I guess there's tweezers and stuff on there, if I had to get a tick out of me. With a bike lock key and one house key. Those are the only keys I bring with me. The rest, if I lose my keys, these are the only two that I lose. And I can still get into my house, and I don't have to go all over hell to find a hardware store to get the right keys made, and calling locksmiths and stuff like that. These are all the receipts I've accumulated on the trip. I like to, you know, have it as reference to see, like, oh, what did I spend money on? How much did this trip actually cost? And then the cash I took out. And this is a wallet that I have. It's just really just a rubber band. So cash, receipts, there's some change in here. Um, and there's the green Tortex guitar picks. So my one credit card, my ID, business cards, and health care, transit card. I don't know why I brought my transit card. And then like an emergency contact list. That's the handlebar bag. Oh yeah, there's a, another side pocket which has a strap. Because when you, the idea with this is um, anything that you definitely do not want uh, like to leave your side, you keep in this bag and just, it clips off really easily. And you take it with you in the store and people think you're carrying a purse and they look at you weird. Maybe also because you're like all sweaty and you've got sand in your hair, but that's the handlebar bag. And we'll move to the panniers on the front wheel. Okay, moving on to the front. And before I do, one piece of kit on my body that I forgot to mention. These are waterproof hiking shoes. And they were like 40 bucks. They have an E on them. The name of the brand starts with an E. Estruca or Estroidist? I don't know. I can never remember what the name is. They're actually really nice. They're really comfortable and um, they are waterproof. Okay, so I just showed you my shoes, but uh, there was other stuff that I was wearing on the bike that the camera didn't record because I ran out of space. So I just realized that because I'm editing the video here and I didn't see any of this stuff on there. So this is not, this is my nice hat. This is not, this is my hat that has been in the sun for many, many, many miles. And it's the hat that I wear when I'm on the road. Same style, but uh, this is just kind of my, this is my travel hat. So. I don't even know. It's DTTO. I don't know. I just looked for a hat without a logo on it on Amazon. This is the shirt that I ride in then, so that I don't wear cotton when I'm riding. This is a starter. You can kind of see that there. Starter. I bought two of these like a long time ago, and they're kind of nice, just basic athletic shirts that you don't really have to wash, and they don't smell, and they dry quickly, and... Um, so that's, that's a good shirt. And then my hiking shorts, which have, they're convertible. They have legs that zip on. So these are marmots. They dry quickly. Um, they're kind of comfortable. I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm always uncomfortable anyways, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. They have this little pocket that's, a, that's nice. And all the pockets have, like, mesh here, so that helps them dry quickly. Um, but the pockets, little side pocket, they're like, I don't know. I put, like, if I forget to pack out my trash and I have a drink packet or something, it'll go in there and it'll be fine. I won't even notice it. So, um, and these hiking pants, I always get them half off. That's a pun, and it isn't. So, on to the rest. Trying to open this up. This has, like, little buckles. Again, awkward panniers. Not user-friendly, but homemade. Here's, you can see, the kind of system I use for, like, there's aluminum U-channel here with a, an old political sign. Uh, okay, this is my rain jacket. This is a marmot. This is actually a waterproof rain jacket. This is like a waterproof fabric. So you can sweat inside this and get yourself wet that way. But that's another reason I bought the sun sleeves is because this feels really gross against your skin when it's wet and humid out. And the sun sleeves eliminate that and wick the wick the moisture off your arm and it actually feels really comfortable. I was I was riding in this in a downpour and it was actually uh, one of the better experiences of riding with a raincoat on, I think. I've got a half roll of toilet paper with the tube taken out. I have needed to use that. Um, and then uh, biodegradable wipes. Shovel. Uh, you can guess what that's for. Bike pump. You know what that's for. This is important. Not for many people, maybe, but for me. My bike is old. There's a problem with the headset where one of the threads is cut. Um, I'd like to get that repaired eventually. Uh, I would hate to lose the, the fork on this bike. Um, everything else is, is pretty much perfect on it. Uh, this is a headset wrench, so my headset does come loose fairly often. You're supposed to set it and forget it, but um, not so with mine. It comes loose. And I've had it looked at a number of times, and there, the jury's out. Okay, this is an important bag. This is an OPSAC. It's an odor-proof bag with a Ziploc. This seal doesn't last very long. But, I can tell you, I think this works because um, I brought Blueberry Fig Newton cookies. And everything in my pack, everything in this food pack that was like absorbent, kind of had a little bit of a blueberry flavor and scent to it. More of a scent. Like, I would go to eat my polenta and I'd smell blueberry before eating it. It was weird. Like, I'm not putting uh, wet snacks in with the the dry foods at all. I put them in a separate op sack. I'll get smaller ones. But one thing I did on this trip, just for reference, I, kept, I packed in all my dry trash. All my wet trash I threw out. But this is all the dry trash. Mostly the, the baggies and stuff from... Uh, the dehydrated meals that I brought. So just as a reference, this is 10 days worth, just so I know uh, what I'm what I'm packing out. Uh, future trips, I'll probably just get rid of it as I go. Chili paste. That's an important thing to have. Um, I prefer, if I'm going to do only one spice in a meal, I prefer like some kind of a wet spice over dried spices. So this is my drinks packet. It's looking a little thin, but it still has some coffee and tea in it. Um, gone are the emergency packets, the electrolyte packets, and I think that's it. So, I all the really important stuff is gone. I do one one emergency packet per day for sure. The day that I felt like I was catching a little bug was the day I skipped that. Mashed potatoes, polenta, two packs left uh, oatmeal and mac and cheese 
Mac and cheese is really easy and really good. Okay, the op sacks, I brought two of them because I had way more food than this. And so I had it divided up between the two bags and it got down to one. I threw the other one away. Um, you can imagine why I may have thrown another, my other odor-proof bag away. You can use your imagination there. Some other things are some tri-flow and some chain oil, which I did use both of them on this trip. I did oil the uh, derailleur and I did oil the chain once. Never a bad thing to do. So that's that bag in its entirety. Moving on to this bag. And this is, there's some gratuitous stuff in here that I, if I were to do this trip again, I would not bring. But I'm, again, I might bring on a smaller trip. So here's the plastic from the firewood bundle that I bought last. Packing out your trash. There's still a lot of gravel dust in here too. Oh, these are these are the foil bags that I put my beer in and stuff with ice and let it sit and maybe swish it around a little bit to cool it off. And it actually works really well. You can get two or three beers. The first one will be really cold. I try to stick to two a day. It's just nice to have a beer when you get when you're putting up your camping stuff. So this is a dry bag that has an interesting item in it. This is a little 3 watt guitar amp. So it also has an input. You can use it as a just a regular speaker. Um, guitar amps have different frequency uh, curves than than uh, like you know stereo amps or power amps. So I would use this to listen to music on my phone and to play guitar and then there's a cord for you know just a, a cord to hook my phone up and also to hook my tablet up for playing the synth and drum machine but that would go most of the time into this other interesting gratuitous item that bike packers would yell at me for bringing probably but i don't care i'm not a bike packer i don't mind carrying weight Actually, I like to see what I can get away with, and uh, I like to have stuff with me when I'm on the road, like doing things. Here's a little Bluetooth adapter that I didn't use that much, and then this is uh, one of these guys for going into stuff like this, because this is a four-track recorder. So I was making tracks. I was doing, like, overlaying guitars with synths and background noises and uh, I did some vocal recording in the motel with some little earbuds here uh, yeah first time I've, I bought this a long time ago and first time I've actually been able to actually make good use out of it because in my room here I actually have a full a full sound studio set up um, eliminates the need for something like that unless you're on the road. And then the last thing in here, which is, yep, the last thing in here, is this big, heavy, freaking bag, which has all the stuff that you might need. There should be a lighter in here. That's one of the spots. We've got a Leatherman kind of deal. I'm just gonna throw everything in here. More stakes. Here's another cutoff from a pack towel that got this is my grease rag if I need to wipe off the chain. Extra batteries. At least, at least enough for one device of each kind that needs batteries. Headlamp. This little wrench amazingly fits every bolt on my bike that needs this kind of wrench. So I labeled it with Trek. So here's a chain tool. Happily have never had to use that on the road. This is what my something came in this. I'll use it for something. Uh, so I don't really need this, but I carry it anyways. More carabiners. Uh, there's a spoke tool in here. Tire levers. These are what I do with the straps to tighten them up. 
kind of hard to do, but it keeps them from squirreling out on you. Loctite, I don't know if I need this. It was just in there. More, lots of steaks. If I find steaks at a campsite, I just grab them. Um, carabiners. Okay, tubes. I don't know. I brought two. Get away with one. You can also just bring a patch kit, but I don't trust myself, my skills as far as that goes. There's one of these in there. I don't know. It might be handy someday. Lots of zip ties. Those are good to have. And that's it. I should have brought a hex tool, like a set, like an Allen set. I forgot it. And I was, yeah, I didn't need it. That was good. And if I did need it, I probably would have been able to use the, uh, you know, the Leatherman or something. Try to find some way to rig it. I could strip out the head, but I could always buy a new bolt later. Not the biggest deal in the world. This is the same deal. It has, in fact, this has little hooks on them. I didn't have to tie it off, but same deal. Just some hooks and bungees. And then we'll look. <laughs> a whole bunch of dust just came off of that bag. Okay, so now everything's off the bike except for probably the most important and mostly used items are the two water bottles, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a rant here. I hate the water bottles that they make for bikes, and I wished that they would make something like this with the little, the little uh, notch, right, to hold them in place, right? Like, I keep stretching these out by using bottles that you don't have to suck on like a baby. So, okay, the bike is a Trek mountain bike, 1983 Trek 850. I took the wheels off and built new ones. I added the handlebars from Nash Bar Butterfly Bars and added the fenders. We've got a, I think that's a Greenfield rear kickstand here. Um, it's an Axiom rear rack, Blackburn front rack, although that's just the branding. You can find Diff you can find racks like this of of uh, uh, other brands or whatever. It's just a common knockoff kind of thing, I think. Uh, so there's a wheel retainer here, which is good when you're using a kickstand. It kind of keeps the the bike from falling over. And the other custom thing that I did, here's the uh, spare spokes. One has a little red stripe on it. That's the right rear. One has a little blue stripe on it. They're wearing off. That's the left rear. The one in the middle without a stripe goes in the front, and those are all the same size. So if I break a spoke, I can just add one of those. I don't need that stupid little kit. But what if you break two? Okay, so um, another customization here is I took the small chain ring off and put a smaller one in for... A super low gear on the front and then I got one of these Shimano super low or yeah super mega mega low I think is what it's called um, it's got one big step down to the lowest gear if you've got both of those lows on you're just spinning out and it's great for for hills um, super low gearing you have you have basically like a couple of uh, mul multiple options for your low gears, which is good to have. And then you've got the normal. Um, I'm glad this isn't a standard touring bike where you have like just like a half step or whatever they call it to go down to the middle. Um, it's actually quite a significant jump to the high gear, which I like. So I actually do use the high gear quite a bit. And then. Since I built my own wheels, here is the Dynamo Hub that's on there. And I forget what it is. It's not an expensive one. It says DH3D37NT, which is, you know, a nut instead of a quick release. And then I got these little clips on there. That's for the bungee on the panniers because there's no way to clip it in here. As opposed to here, where the bungee gets gets uh, secured by this thing. So,
The seat is WTB SST. This is the saddle that would come standard on the Surly Long Haul Truckers. Uh, back when I started taking this bike apart and putting it back together. I got it cheap at a garage sale, presumably because somebody bought a long haul trucker and wanted to change a seat and just wanted to get rid of this. So it's actually pretty nice. It, I could get better. It doesn't have a lot of give, but it has enough support. I don't like super squishy seats, so it works out pretty well. And I think, I think that's it. That's my unpacking for my ridiculous load for this trip and part of the reason I wanted to do this is just as reference like next time uh, I'll kind of have something to go by and maybe I'll also remember my hex set. Okay, bye. This is a test. This is another test. What? Something sticking out here. What is that? This. Hmm. I see. I'm gonna change the camera around. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera over so I don't have this little thing poking out. Okay, now we don't have that. I'm going to come over here, maybe be in the way a little bit.